Uh, number four, compare yourself to someone who you were yesterday, not to someone else, not to, well, let's start that over, yep. just because I wanted to get it right. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. Yeah, well, you got to improve, right? And so, and you might think, well, I'm a real fixer-upper and I'm really embarrassed about that because there's 50 things wrong with me and like, look at that guy. And so now I feel all terrible because of the comparison and all of that. And First of all, it's unfair because especially by the time you're about 30, like when you're 17, you're like every other 17 year old. And so that kind of social comparison is more appropriate. By the time you're about 30, your life has become quite idiosyncratic, you know, like let's say your life has eight dimensions, family, friends, intimate relationships, health, you know, you can kind of lay them out. You're individually positioned in all those dimensions. Your life isn't like anyone else's life. And so you see someone who's doing better than you. It's like you're only seeing one dimension at one slice of time. So it's not reasonable. You're not, you don't have the whole picture, you know. So, and then you, you, you get down on yourself and, and take the spirit out of yourself and you get bitter and resentful. It's like that, there's nothing good about that. Yeah. So, so, but you do need to improve because there's more to you than, there's not as much of you as there should be. So what's the comparison? Well, that's easy. You just say, okay, well, here, here's my position in time and space right now. Here's my virtues and faults. It's like, I can be a little bit better tomorrow in some minor way. Well, that's the right comparison because you are very much like you. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything's the same about you. Yeah. And so it's the perfect comparison. And then you get a trajectory going. It's like, well, I... Obviously, I'm not perfect, but I'm slightly less terrible than I was yesterday. Man, you keep that up for five years, and you're wherever you should be. That isn't where someone else should be, right? Because you really are an individual. There, there's an so, interesting element of this <clears throat> on, on a biblical note that I think you hit sometimes, which is sort of don't pray to false gods, because it's, like, it's sort of like, well, the guy that you're looking at that you think has everything, yeah. you have no idea. Yeah, you, right. You, yeah. And we see that now with all these people crumbling in Hollywood that are worshipped by so many people who have done all sorts of terrible oh, yeah. things or, or whatever it is. Yeah, well, you just don't have insight into the tragedy of someone else's life. You know, and you might think, well, he's rich and successful. It's like, yeah, but you just don't know. You don't know what his relationship is with his wife or his children. You know, you don't know that he's gone through two divorces and his daughter won't talk to him and one of his kids is schizophrenic. And Like, most people's lives are pretty nicely <laughs> saturated with tragedy, you know, and with a certain degree of malevolence. And you might think, well, I'd trade places with him in a minute. And I'm also not saying that some people don't have it really rough. It's of course, like, of course. look, man, some people have it rough. Yeah. That's not the point. It's not the point. The point is... You should be better than you are, but it's not because you're worse than other people. It's because you're not everything you should be. And so you've got to pick the comparison right. And then that's also ennobling. It's like an instantly hopeful. There is absolutely no doubt that you can be slightly better tomorrow than you are today. And then because of the Pareto principle, that, you know, that, that, that movement towards the good in, increases exponentially, that trajectory can just take you out of hell very, very rapidly. And so, you know, there's nothing but good about that. Yeah, just so, quick sidebar yeah. before we get to number five. So you mentioned sort of 17, we're all sort of at that same, you can't have that much differentiation That's probably between the people so around quick. you. But 30, it's a little more calcified. Yeah. Do you think there's an, a cutoff age? I don't mean exactly a number, like you're gonna say 56, but do you think that there's a point, and, and there was a question asked at Clemson where uh, somebody said to you, you know, you've really helped my 60-year-old father who had all this stuff going wrong in his life. He started listening to you and he's, he said he's, I think she said he's in the best place he's ever been yeah. or something. But do you think that there's a cutoff age where just physiologically, you can't quite do Well, I do think a it gets harder, because yeah. you get more who you are as you get older. You know, so there's not, the ratio of actuality to potential starts to shift. But, but it doesn't change the, the underlying simple truth, which is there is definitely something that you can do today that will make you slightly better for the next day. Always. Always. No, let's, okay, not always. You're 85, right. you have Alzheimer's, you know, you're done. You, sometimes you're done, but... Most of the time you're not, and most of the time there's something within your grasp that you could put right. And, see, that's the fundamental issue. It's like, life is tragic. It's full of suffering and it's full of malevolence. There's no doubt about that. And it's, it's brutal. And it's more brutal than you can even imagine in some ways, or willing to imagine. 
But there's something you could put right. And we don't know what would happen if you put everything you could right, if you put it right. And then we don't know what would happen if everyone did that. But you can be certain that it would be less tragic and less malevolent. And so, like, you don't have anything better to do than that. <laughs> right, like, get, get cracking. Get at it, man. Get cracking, right. man. All right.